Okay, so much to discuss here. Firstly, did you have any clue? You knew you were going to be big time now. Did you have any clue the animosity that you were going to face for years? At, not right away. I, I, I had a, a, a quick awakening to the reality of what I did. In those days, people believed. They believed Bruno. I mean, even no matter what they thought of wrestling, people would say, oh, I don't know wrestling, but Bruno. <laughs> I'm telling you, a after that, when, when I hit Bruno with the chair, because pe people's brain, they believed, they, they believed this was going to be a friendly, scientific, they never thought. It shocked them. After I hit Bruno with the chair and left, if you've watched those tapes, there was no riot. There was really not people going, you know, ape crap so much. People were sitting there. I remember, I can see some of the faces of these old ladies and the fans. They were like this. It didn't register for a while. It might have taken a couple days. People went into shock. They didn't expect it. It caught them so off guard. But as soon as they realized, I had death threats. Police departments called me, warned me, don't go to Little Italy. Don't go to this town. I went to arenas for the first time, you know, where I've always been like before, where they would love me. I walked out of one arena. I got shot at. Like, like, like a shotgun blast, bricks, you know, above my head. I, and it shocked me. I dove into a car and sped away as people were smashing. I had cars smashed. I was turned over in a cab pulling into the back of Boston Gardens. And then, just, I mean, I learned how to, you know, work and control the crowd. I could start a riot at the drop of a hat, which wound up getting me stabbed in the ass one night in Albany. So you had to be careful, but... I, it never, I mean, all the rest, even with the guys, you know, I watched Bruno growing up, growing up with, never was a reaction, never was the hate or the heat as great with the business as it was when I stabbed Bruno in the back. Right. We really, I mean, I really made the people felt betrayed. I mean, the show we did today, autograph sessions I do now, People still come up to me and they say, I hated you. I hated you so much. I mean, they really hated me. Did it, Bruno it, say to you, Larry, do you really want to do this because you're going to have a problem? No. No, he didn't say that. Should he have? Well, I don't know if he realized it was going to be that much of a shock. I don't think the McMahons realized it was going to be that huge. Uh, Vince Sr. didn't believe in it. He didn't want to do really, he didn't believe in me and Bruno. I think he did it to pacify Bruno and say, okay, yeah, great, do it. Hoping that I'd be getting rid of soon and Bruno would be back in the ring and then he could bring some other uh, guy in. Yeah. Uh, when it came to Shea Stadium, Vince Sr. did not believe no way in hell we're going to sell yeah. out Shea Stadium. In those days, the thought of wrestling selling out a stadium was right. unheard of. But here on in February now, when you're you, you do the chair, it was it was a wooden chair, right? Yeah. You do the whole thing, and and Bruno's gonna blade, and and it's gonna be. Are, are you nervous before? Is there a moment behind the curtain where you do a? This is the big one. <laughs> Take a second, go over the match in your mind. Whatever you do, what's the preparation for the biggest? Oh, I was of your pacing life? back and forth. I mean. I was, I, 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 I was psyched. I, I knew my big break was coming, but I, I also knew that we had them at the point where they were going to be shocked. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize the shock would turn into such a degree of hate, but I knew that this was going to work. Was it a so gimmick I, chair? No. No, but it, it, it wasn't a gimmick chair. And if, if you watch the film, I didn't hit Bruno the way they do today with the steel chairs. Today right. they stand there like a moron, <laughs> and these guys come down with steel chairs, and if you don't dent the steel chair, that's bad. <laughs> I mean, if I would have hit Bruno like that, yeah. it would have been bad because I would have been considered a horrible worker right. because I did that. It was a different... It was illusion. Yeah, it was an illusion. Right. Um, Blood on TV back then, much more rare. 
than it was today. The house shows, you'd have somebody gig, but on the, the weekly TV show, when somebody opened up, it was a big deal, right? Well, yeah, it was rare because, again, it, it was something they would use for returns. You go to a house show, the, you know, the, the, the good guy was about to beat the bad guy, but he had a cut over his eye, so the doctor would come up and stop the match, and the people would go, oh, God, he didn't beat this guy, but that just meant there's a return next month. Right. TV was rare, but uh, it wasn't just blood. I mean, it was a pool of blood. I mean, Bruno was lying there when they picked him up. I mean, there was a pool of blood. It was dripping from his nose and his mouth. And, and again, the building was like dead silent. You know, normally there'd be, you know, noise and, and people would, it, it, it was shock. Something that, that I've never seen in the wrestling business go in shock. I've seen people get heart attacks. When Bruno, you know, in the past, you know, he'd fall down, people would get heart attacks and die. And that, that's... When he would lose? No, just when, like, if you were, like, watching him wrestle in the Civic Arena yeah. and Bruno would start bleeding and fall over, people would get heart attacks and die. That's how emotionally they were involved in this. This went way beyond that. In fact, uh, you know, a couple of matches in the garden when I was wrestling Bruno, I could see EMTs running up and, you know, carrying people out that have mm -hmm. dropped over because... They were so emotionally into it, they had heart attacks. Now, you set this all up on TV. You do your heel turn now. Um, have you already planned with Bruno and McMahon that this is going to do the house show loop and then culminate in what would be a stadium show? Have you gone that far out with it yet at this point? Well, n not at this point. At this point, Shea Stadium w wasn't an idea. Okay. What happened was, again, Bruno didn't do house shows. He just did the big shows. So after this, after this hit TV, I would, you know, wrestle Ivan Putsky. I'd wrestle Strongbow. Uh, I'd wrestle Gurria, my ex-partner. Mm -hmm. and, and so I would wrestle these guys during the week, but I only wrestled Bruno at Madison Square Garden, right. or the Spectrum, or, you know, the big shows. And we programmed it in a way where we melt and got the most mileage. So sure. I'd wrestle maybe three times. I think we wrestled three times in the garden and maybe broke it up once with Backlund or a Battle Royal. We wrestled three times in the Civic Arena. And then this was all happening. And then what happened was, if I remember correctly, something happened with the garden where the availability was off or something weird. And, and, and I'm the one that said, well, look it. Let's do it in Shea Stadium because it was so huge. And, and Vince McMahon Sr. didn't want to. I'm sure the rent was really ridiculous. And, and again, they still didn't believe in it. Be, you know, they thought, maybe, okay, quickie. But they didn't believe in it. Not that they didn't like me, but I wasn't a 300-pound gorilla that they were used to. That was the... Mm -hmm. Cliche, you know, I wasn't 300 pound Tanaka or 300 pound Monsoon or Koloff or George Steele. So, because I was a 240 pound babyface kind of guy, the McMahons didn't think I could pull it off. Let's just get kind of these atmosphere here this okay. night okay you walk in and uh, mm. is it a palpable excitement it was the thrill of a lifetime you gotta remember in those days there's no fireworks there's no music you know nothing going on I walked out for the first time you know in Madison Square Garden to wrestle Bruno you could feel and, you know, it's almost like you wonder why some of these athletes do what they do. It's, it's an addiction, almost like a drug. You walk, when I walked out, the energy, in my case, negative, I mean the booze, was so overpowering. I mean, when you got, you know, so many thousands of people in one place hating you that much, you could feel the garden shake. I mean, the beams and the bolts and the roof. I mean, these people were shaking it. You could see where the walls of Jericho could come down if you had enough people yelling with the vibration of, you know, sound frequency. I mean, it, it, it kind of caught me off guard because it was, it shakes your body. Uh, but you realize, 
You, you, I mean, the rush that came in my body, mm -hmm. I mean, there's not a drug on earth that could make you feel that overwhelmed, but excited and, and amazed and powerful. I mean, it's, it's really undescribable. Unless you walked out in front of that many people that it blew that much emotion at you, and I got the negative. Right. When I was in the ring and Bruno came out, it was even bigger, but it was the positive. Right. It was the love. And now the building of Madison Square Garden just blew off. Before you guys go out, um, are you given any extra security precautions walking to the ring? Any more cops showing up? No. The, not in the good old days. Yeah. No, no. I mean... How much do you discuss with Bruno about what's going to go on in the ring? You know, I, I, God, to be honest with you, I really don't remember because everything was, you know, fairly simple. Mm -hmm. And it was probably very simple stuff, you know, where, because, again, at that stage, Bruno was, again, a little older, you know, couldn't do some of the things that he, he did when he was younger, but he never really did a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, Bruno would you know, do the arm drags, the bear hug backdrops. It was very simple in mm -hmm. terms of the wrestling, but he was a master in, in selling and getting the people, you know, emotion. I think in this one, he basically beats you from pillar to post for 15 minutes, right? I mean, well, I, yeah, probably at the beginning. Yeah. And well, yeah, I, I think I remember the very beginning. I mean, you're talking about, you know, nowadays when you, you can do anything and people just sit there. I mean, I think after a couple of minutes, Bruno gave me one arm drag and 26,000 people went out of their seats right. for something as simple. But that's, you know, the tension that was built. I mean, it's really hard to explain the, the energy. It was like being in the energy of the universe mm -hmm. in, in the middle of all that. But, but, but it was very simple because it was a wrestling match. It wasn't a bump fest. It mm -hmm. wasn't a choreographed. There wasn't, you know, sheets of moves. Right. We, we had lived and did what needed to be done at that second mm -hmm. according to what the crowd was into because mm -hmm. we knew what the crowd was into. If you pre-planned the whole match, and you lose the crowd and you keep going, the crowd is lost. Right. New York City, now here we are, right? This is the, the heart of, uh, this is the heart of San Martino land, right? Oh yeah. So you know this is gonna be a big one. Uh, do you remember how you left that night? Arena. I'm trying to think. Probably didn't walk out onto 6th Avenue. No, boy, you know what, boy, you boy, boy. I don't know. I know I didn't. I, I know I didn't walk out. I mean, we always went, you know, in and out of the back way, mm -hmm. anyway. But I was, if I remember correctly, I was escorted out. I don't remember if this was the last match or not. It probably wasn't. No. And the reason, you know, I never really would wrestle last is because somehow through some door or hiding in some trunk, I would have to be snuck out of a building. Right. So I was probably let out some strange door and it was i think the garden was right above uh grand central station mm. or something penn station yeah. penn station i mean i, I kind of seem to remember vaguely winding up so i might have been taken out some way through penn station where you know no fans were if i remember right but those brains that's a long time ago 